Hey, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Hey, it's John. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? This is Hobbs. And this is John. And what we're going to be doing today is. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we started recording this, we were thinking about doing a thousand years, but Harp said we'd be dead by then, so we yeah, put it yeah, down to we... five hundred to be a bit more optimistic. Oh, we're gonna die, man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. We, we we would never be able to see it in a thousand years, would we? Yeah, we also talked about what a hundred years, but you know, I thought five hundred years is the sweet spot. You well, a hundred years, we might still be around. We, we you know, if healthcare improves, um, we could. Be yeah, here but I don't think tons will happen at that time. Five hundred years is going to be much, much broad, rather than thousand, which is fucking. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, isn't it? Yeah, but our life expectancy for me and you, uh, yeah. probably eighty to ninety years old, hopefully, if we're healthy. <laughs> as um, the crow flies, of course. Yeah, <laughs> as the crow flies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but say in 500 years, I think the life expectancy for a person born then will be a lot more, maybe 150, I reckon. Yeah, but with, you know, pollution and everything, wouldn't that decrease in, in time? Well, if you, you look at the way things are going, like with uh, cars and stuff, like everything's becoming electric, everything's getting cleaner, uh, more energy efficient, so pollution i don't think would be a major problem then well i think there was a t statistic that um i looked at before and i think it said that pollution stays in the uh the atmosphere for i think 50 plus years so by the time they sort out everything there's still going to be the pollution in the atmosphere so yeah, it's it could decrease yeah it could decrease our life expectancy you know unless you know um medical breakthroughs and you know other medical breakthroughs um you know help but, us but look at it from run. this way um china and india are industrializing they want the same things that we have and to do that they're building coal factories like we did years and years ago and they've got more people than we have so it's yeah, going to be they're... it's going to be another <laughs> pollution boom in that area even though we're yeah. getting more efficient they want bread on every table, two cars in every garage, they, two yeah, they, chickens they in want the coop. <laughs> they want literally everything. Yeah. You know? But, so, don't but yeah, but even then but even then, more if they're gonna have more cars and everything, they're not they're not really as standard as the the Western world, are they? Because we're we're slowly moving into electric and more uh, renewable energies, but they're still using all like fossil fuels and everything. So yeah. it's probably gonna take quite a while for them to catch on. China China is building two coal factories a week. And that's going to continue to rise. And for many years, they're going to be using that energy source. They haven't yet invested money into renewable energies. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure be... Scotland can supply them. <laughs> yeah, uh, we could hook them up nicely with that and hopefully help our economy. Um, yeah. It is interesting, though, but I think that, uh, you know, it also depends on, you know, with life expectancy, like what the person eats and uh, obesity is going up as well. So... That's it's true. dramatically That's increasing. True. So, you know, the average, you know, kid in the future might probably live to maybe 50. If that's the case, then I don't want to live in that world anymore. <laughs> well, you won't be in 500 years, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Unless, unless they get frozen and, you know, get thrown in a capsule and then they say, oh, yeah, bring him down, lads. And then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that might be a different story altogether. Yeah, it would be. That would be cool. I mean, what would you do? If, or what would be the first thing you would do if you were uh, woken up after death? You, you've you been frozen and 400 years down the line, they bring you back with technology. What would be the so, so first you're saying thing you do? But how old would I be? Uh, pretend... How old would I be when they freeze me? How, how do you want to die? Do you want to die young or or old? I don't know. Well, you're the one who gave me the 400 years <laughs> well, in the example, future, so you, you're, you're kind of dictating it now. So, For example, you come around my house, I poison your porridge, and you die at 25. There you go. There's your situation there. Well, so, and they bring me back to life. So they freeze me and then bring me back to life with 
Yeah, I, I I feel guilty, so I pay for the the frozen stuff, or I just chuck you in my freezer. And four hundred years down the line, they bring you back. You forget to kill me. <laughs> you forget to dispose of my body. <laughs> I believe me. I'll make sure you're dead, Hart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, all right. First so, of all, if I walk up about Tom, I'll do. Up obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> after that probably think you know where am i and obviously don't know man I, I, I always think that in the future it's going to be very clean because you always see, uh, look at all these movies and when they look into the future everything's like you know paper white and everything you know like pristine like uh daisy clothing you know so it, it's, it's just a totally different thing i mean you'd obviously think oh like where's mom and dad where's, where's my family where's my friends and that's a very then, good point. Uh, That's a very good point. Yeah, because so, they would all be dead. Yeah, exactly. So then you would have to get over that emotional state. You'd probably be in such a state you wouldn't want to kill yourself, or you'd be in a state where you'd be like, okay, guys, you know, it, it, you know, whatever's done is done. I'll probably die ages ago. They're probably done mourning over me, you know, and obviously they will be because it's 400 years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, what do you think? The, rather, if you ask me, what the first thing I would do is, uh, I'd go back to my my childhood house and see if it was still there, um, and see if I had any family that may be still alive. Obviously, my later generations, um, and see. I'd also see. Um, so they'd probably be robots or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good one as well. W- would we have robots? And if so, I'd want to try Put one. Bionic. Yeah, and how intelligent like would they bionic. be? mate they'd probably be on the same level as us i I think 400 years down the line i'm sure someone will crack like artificial intelligence properly you know yeah without a doubt i mean it's with moore's law it's doubling every is it two years or one year yeah no uh yeah it's doubling every 18 months i think but the thing is moore's law is gonna uh it's not gonna collapse but it's gonna halt around 2025 so at time uh you know, there'll probably be another kind of law to govern how technology moves. You know, yeah. but that that Moore's law is only for computer parts. So unless they make new architecture on how computer chips and everything are made, like three D uh, layering, then that's totally different. You know, or holographic layering, and you know, however they do it. I think that's but, the way uh, forward. I remember <laughs> yesterday or the other day, uh, you telling me that they were trying to put chips in everything, and chips would be really cheap. So they will will yeah, be no. in everything around the house, computer chips. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was just about to say something about potatoes, but let's just let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's true. Um, I mean, if they put obviously computer chips and pretty much everything, you know, you probably have a smart mouse which knows when to turn on as soon as you touch it, or you know, computer. You don't That's even need to touch the button as soon as you as soon as you walk in the room. <laughs> in guys so <laughs> still working on it <laughs> yeah and uh you know as soon as you walk in the house the you know the sensors are all around computer chips will monitor you know well it, ju- just in general like your blood glucose levels and everything you don't need to wear anything it's just monitoring you all the time you yeah. know people are obviously going to probably be scared of that but i think it will be pretty cool well there's something like that kind of exists in a way i mean there's a the houses that are being built now like uh, high-end apartments you have an app on your yeah. phone that tracks your gps so it knows where you are and when you come into the house it puts the heating on and stuff like that and uh, the lighting goes to ambient temperatures but then when you leave light ambient the lighting goes to ambient like mood lighting and when you leave the house all that switches <clears throat> off because it knows you've left yeah but Johnny, I mean, are you talking about there. the houses we can't afford yeah, those high end ones <laughs> that we would never have. Maybe you might have but, one in but, the future but, in 400 years. Who knows, man? I might have robotic legs and everything, so I might be able to walk into my uh, 16 million pound house, which will probably be worth maybe like 200 pound in today's value. You know? <laughs> so who knows, man? <laughs> well, but, you know, um, I think it's going to be, obviously, if it's, let's just say within like 400 years or 500 years, it's going to be totally different because. Uh, you know, all that technology is going to be worthless. You know, it's just going to be there and everything. So it's going to be like um, Dr. Michio Kaku. He said, uh, obviously, 
you know how the internet is pretty much you know you you turn it on like you turn on your computer and your internet's on yeah well he thinks that it's going to pretty much be like uh in the future you know how you uh when you you come in your house you just turn the light on it's just that instinct the internet will always be on it it'll be there but everywhere you know but you yeah. won't you won't say oh yeah why why is all this why all these ethernet cables all around it's just be it'll just be in the wall hidden you know it will just be there you know and I, I think that's where everything's gonna go everything's just gonna be there but everywhere and nowhere at the same time yeah i think that as well um you also told me before about a fridge where your products would have chips in them that are able to measure the contents of the container so so when you're running out of milk it knows that and it orders you some new one it gets delivered things like that yeah i think samsung's working on something like that at the moment um, yeah that's really but it's very very basic yeah it's very basic so um obviously in the future i think it'll be a bit different so um obviously when it lowers to an extent then you'll be able to order one but i think <clears throat> i think this is only for america at the moment but uh i recently saw something so for example let's just say you've got bounty tissue paper and you've got like uh uh you know you're those tatimo coffee machines you can get the pods right make your yeah. coffees well, well amazon are going to be selling little buttons that you can put around your house and if you press it it automatically orders it so they're actually doing that in America at the moment. That's really cool. That so, really so cool. in a sense, that yeah, exactly. But I think that it will be a bit different if it's in fridge freezers and everything, you know. So obviously, when when the milk, you know, goes to like maybe a quarter left, it might say, "Would you like to order one?" And you just press one button, boom, it's done. You know, it, it, or it will just do it automatically, depending on the subscription model. And it, there could be a subscription model for everything in the future. Who knows? It slowly looks like it's getting there. It is. I mean, everything these days is subscription based. I remember um, the PlayStation Three; you could play on the internet for free, uh, like games online. And uh, even now, you have P- PS Plus, and you need that for gaming online. Uh, some yeah. games now, like uh, the uh, Elder Scrolls, are subscription based as well. I mean, they're bringing out a definitive version now, where you pay a one-off fee and you you can play it for how however yeah. long you want. But yeah, subscription based. I like the idea of it, but um, that's you know when you're working and stuff like that, you've got all these little payments coming up, all these little yeah. microtransactions of subscriptions you've got, and then you forget about them yeah. and they're still charging you for it. Um, yeah, and then you don't want your little brat of a kid to just keep pressing the buttons, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the incurring costs here and there. But yeah, I think exactly. That is the you don't want to check check your bills like seven hundred pounds, <laughs> you know, uh, of of transactions buying like bounty or something, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. I um I looked at my phone this morning. Uh, I just got a HTC M9, which came three days before release, so it's very new. But yeah, with what with this show we're doing now, we're talking about what life would be like in the future. And I look yeah. at us now and look back to say a hundred years ago, and they're using things you know like a, a really really basic and primitive phone that uses a little suction cup on your ear and another cup on the on the desk and you laugh at that but at the time that yeah. was high tech so i'm wondering whether you know, you, know the... you just said that <laughs> yeah you just pretty much reminded me of titanic when they pick up those little the phones you know and ahoy <laughs> instead of hello <laughs> yeah but we laugh yeah. at that but i mean will they laugh at my htc in a hundred years and say what the hell they is probably that? will <laughs> they probably will you know uh Technology is going to change so much. I mean, what? Just ten years ago, we were on Nokia phones, you know, yeah, and they yeah. had the they had buttons and everything. And I'm sure your BlackBerry had the same that you had ten years ago. Okay, let, let's clear this up. <laughs> Me and Hubs, I've I've been a long time BlackBerry fan. I love the keyboard and. He always rips on me for this, always. And he's an Apple tech guy. He likes his iPhones, iPads, and whatever. I so like he's always everything. ripping on me for having. I'm anti BlackBerry. <laughs> But there's nothing wrong no with it. Issue. There's nothing wrong with it. People will still use it in a hundred years because they will still work. And the keyboard, you cannot beat that. <laughs> that typing experience. Even though I've got HTC now, I'm <laughs> suffering with the touchscreen. The BlackBerry is... That's why you've got to get used to it, man. It's the future. Unfortunately, yeah. But I'll still have my BlackBerry in my pocket on my deathbed. <laughs> well, in the future, I think it'll be a bit different because... Uh, 
I think in labs at the moment, which obviously are in testing phases. You know how that Google Glass uh, lens that goes over your face, like yeah, it's kind of like Oculus, but it's not. It's like a camera, and it gives you like notifications, GPS, literally everything. But it was priced at something stupid, like fifteen hundred pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Like two thousand dollars, I think. I'm not sure. Um, read it up, guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like. Uh, they've obviously stopped production on that because probably uh, not enough interest and price is too high. But I think it's another reason because, uh, you know, because things are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, they'll probably have to put something like that in a contact lens, you know, and it will be in your eye, literally. You don't need, like, a lens covering your face. And a lot of people don't like wearing glasses, you know. Yeah, that is so, true. It's a hindrance on your face, isn't it? It's just exactly. There. But if you've got contact lenses, like a clear coat, with the lens on there, um, sorry, a clear coat with the, uh, you know, all the robotics and whatever needs to go in there, the LCD and everything. It'll be like nano, I think. But uh, that that will be amazing, you know, just walking down the street and you get a notification saying, you know, uh, you've just missed your appointment or, you know, you need to pick up some flowers for your mummy, you know. <laughs> well, Harps has been in the freezer for too long, take him out now. <laughs> Before he actually yeah. dies. <laughs> yeah, but that would Pull be him cool. down from Earth, guys. Do you, have, have you ever used contacts? I tried it. There's a pain in the ass to put in the eye. you got to look in a certain way and then put the contact in and it just... Did you feel like pain, really but... awkward like putting it in? Because obviously you're touching your eyeball. Yeah, well, the thing is, it's just like... It doesn't feel natural because obviously... You know when you... When something gets closer to your eye, your natural instinct is to blink. So, That's right, yeah. Exactly. So if someone's trying to put a you know, contact lens, a robotic contact lens in my eye, I have a feeling that it'll either be a flexible kind of, you know, you know, wiring and everything like that, an L C D, like an O L E D or something, but in a sense, like I don't want to break it either because you know, my eyelashes are to die for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you look after those really well. <laughs> you, <man. laughs> yeah, but uh, I wouldn't be able to put anything in my eyes. I'm not really good at things like that. Even eye drops, I find it very difficult to use those. Okay, well, you don't use eye drops then, eh? <laughs> uh, now, now onto the economy. I was thinking, um, we've just come out of a recession. Like 2008, we yeah. had a, a big recession. Um, and now we're coming up to the May elections here in the UK, the 2015, for a new Prime Minister. And mm -hmm. They're all promising new things for the economy, but that's only for the next five years, that their term. But where will it be in 500 years? What will the economy look like? Will the pound still that's be? Big. Will the pound coin still be there? The <clears> British <throat> pound? Well, what do you think first? Well, I'm glad we didn't join the euro, be. because I think that was the start of a you know, a single currency for the whole of Europe. And I don't want I don't want a world currency either. I think countries should have their own currency because then you can trade currencies and stuff like that. But I understand if the world does become more globalised, um, there there probably would be one currency. But if you're listening from the USA, I mean the dollar, that's the biggest currency in the world. Um so I think that would still exist and whether the whole world would use dollars, I don't know. What do you think? Well, at the moment, I think there's going to be a new currency formed by some of the eastern countries called BRICS, I think, B-R-I-C-E-S. Oh, yes, we build um, houses with those. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I've got quite um, a lot of those, actually. Uh, I should be all right in the future. <laughs> yeah, you should be all right. Yeah, you'd probably be a, a billionaire or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that you know, they're going to be trying to form their own currency. And uh, I think, obviously, U.S., dollars quite uh, powerful in the world so obviously if they form their own currency then it will put a little bit of scare tactics and, and, and everything and you know but as, as currencies go I think because we're moving more to a digital world I don't think that we're going to be seeing a currency name per se so it won't be like dollars like 400 years down the line I don't think you're going to go into a you know you're not going to go to their airport and and you know they have loads of different currency options that you can pay with you know yeah. I think it will just be like you pay 418 credits or something, you know, just something generic. 
You know, yeah. I don't think it's going to be like five dollars and then you know two pounds and you know all them options. Because the thing is, it gets confusing. And uh, in in a world we're going to have five hundred years down the line, and if you talk you, if you're talking about economy now, you're going to have more people in the world. You know, and you know it's going to it's turning into a global world now. Like everyone's moving around, and you know it's not like how it used to be when people used to take like a flipping a boat or something all the way down to um. I don't know, an island, for example, it's more like everything's flight and, you know, everything's quick, you know. Um, so there's a lot to think about, to be honest, and I think that it will mainly be credits, but it will just be one generic thing. I had an idea for the economy. Um, I might have told you this already, but for the viewers, um, it's just a way of re- everything now is money and you have to earn money and stuff like that. And if you can't afford something, you can't have it. But my idea for the economy would be that everybody in society would have a job. There would be no money whatsoever in the economy. It would just be <laughs> an economy made of people. And um, depending on the work you do, say if I was uh, a labourer, yeah. a bricklayer, house building houses, I'd be given a B category lifestyle, which means that I could have a B category car, a B category house, a B category TV. So you'd never be out without these things. And um, say if you was a doctor, you'd be given an A category. So you'd have all A category cars and all this sort of stuff. And uh, the people who had jobs that you you didn't work hard or didn't want to work, you'd be given the lowest class, which is category C. So you'd still have all the stuff, but they wouldn't be as good as category B or or A. But you could work towards getting that. And people who would be building aeroplanes, they wouldn't be building it for money. They'd be building it for their category status. (coughs) And that's how I think it could work. So it's like a uh, like a gaming system. So like how people get points, and the more and the more you put into the economy, the more you get back, pretty much. Yeah. So the harder you work, the the bigger your category. Say if I, I was working forty hours a week as a doctor, I'd be given the A category because of the what I'm mm-hmm. bringing in. And people who are growing foods and stuff like that, they'd be given A category. Farmers, A category. Okay. Well. Tell me this then. So, footballers at the moment get crazy money. They get millions and millions, right? For you know, obviously sponsors and blah blah blah. So how would that work in in your ideal world? C category. Four hundred, five hundred years down the line. C category for those. They because should... they're not putting enough into the economy. I mean, or... yeah. I mean, they're providing entertainment. Um, <laughs> and whether that would be a separate category, I don't know. But people who are providing food for the population, providing healthcare. Yeah. I think they should be given the A category. Yeah. And no, I'll that, give that you, makes sense. I'd give you the E category, the lowest. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's not fair, is it? Give you that 10 inch widescreen TV, 480p. <laughs> not That's not fair. I think I'll work, I think I'll work very hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I should be on the A plus category. Yeah. The thing is, it's turning into school kind of, you know, stuff that you're talking about now, you know? And you you know how it was back in the days. You'd like limited to what grades you're going to get depending on how what kind of set you're in and everything. Well, put I don't this, know if this works in the US or anything. But. Put put it this way. Um, for example, say a single mother who has two children because the husband left her. Um, mm. She's trying to bring up two children. She's got a job. She's working <laughs> extremely hard. Yeah. But she's not making any money, so she can't afford to buy a TV for herself or a holiday. But she'd be working so hard in my economy that she'd be given the A category. So, I mean, work... the John Safe, you guys. <laughs> in 500 years down the line, if you can hear this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reason, guys. <laughs> they may laugh at this in uh, 500 years, which I'm sure they will at some of the ideas. But 500 years is a long time. Yeah, anything can happen. There might not even be anything to govern, you know. Everything might be okay. But otherwise, you know, there might be other things that, you know, terror could take over the world, you know, ISIS and everything. And it could well, be a totally different world than what what you your ideal world could be. You where, know? For example, where do you see the next big war? If there was going to be a World War Three, what would be causing it? Um... I don't think it will be like ISIS and stuff because they're small groups. But obviously, if that if that kind of group gets massive and they declare war on the US or something, 
that's where something will trigger and I think that other obviously eastern countries are going to be like no we need to back them because you know the western world thinks they, they're too powerful and so and so and that that that's a, that's I don't know I mean because in 500 years time we're going to probably be in a different world but I don't think the world war free or anything's going to come anytime soon I think well what about well, Russia actually, could <laughs> What do you mean about Russia? Russia is a huge danger to to peace and freedom. I think they are the only thing that's stopping the world from being that peace, that complete peace, and where we could disarm, get rid of our nukes. We can't do that because of Russia, I think, because they're so volatile and they're they're thinking as if they were a hundred years ago. Once, like what they did in Ukraine, they and the Crimea, they they took that land forcibly. Mm-hmm. That they're a danger to peace, and I think if there will be World War Three, it will be them that starts it, and I think that they would need to be wiped out for us to to move on. Not, well, not technically, the people, they almost the started a world war, didn't they? They almost did start a world war, pretty much, because they they're trying to during the Cold War. They well, put, they were pushing their luck. Now, I mean, here, I mean, like obviously from what's happening, you know, the countries and how Russia's getting involved and all the sanctions and everything. But, you know, obviously they weren't directly involved. They were trying to cause tension with inside the country, you know, without getting involved. So they're not, uh, you know, held responsible, but they were. But that could have gone in another different way. They, they could have been like, you know, we're going to declare war on so-and-so. And then, you know, the Western world could have said, all right, we're going to back these countries because we're, we're partners with them and everything. And then it could have become something huge. And you got Hawaii in the distance being like, okay, guys, <laughs> don't want to get into any wars now. <laughs> you know? Well, so, <laughs> if you, uh, for viewers who don't know this, but recently and quite a few times actually, Russia has been flying planes into UK airspace. And they're planes that are capable of carrying nuclear warheads. So all they're doing is flexing mm-hmm. their muscles, saying that if we wanted to, we could be here within like 10 hours or something. Not only that, but they actually um, their submarines are going into our waters and Swedish waters and just staying there. I think trying to show people that they can be all around the world if they want to, and that's that's dangerous. Yeah, no one will know. Yeah, that is really dangerous. So how long have they been there? You know, they they, they could have come in in the submarine, got into the pier. <laughs> yeah, they they walked could have over to the fast. local KFC. They could have done anything, you know, and. Uh, Especially with the um, was it the jet that came in, or is it? I don't know what what kind of plane it was. It was a but... bomber. Yeah, and then the UK uh, Air Force they got they scrambled it back or something. But yeah, how we... long did it take for that bloody that aeroplane to actually be there before they actually realised? Because well, usually, in a, I'm I'm guessing in probably the US it will be a different story. You know, they probably have like border control and make sure that there's no planes coming in without authorization. So that just shows you how much of an you know a problem it is now but they need to probably put more money into the defense in the future to make it more secure 500 years down the line yeah five, i think 500 years down the line russia won't exist in the way it does now i think it will be a democracy and not mm. a communist or or any of that sort of military themed country that that wants to invest billions of dollars into their military and trying to improve it and invest in nuclear warheads. It's like they're they're mm-hmm. predicting a war that they know they're gonna get themselves into. And I think the people are the the victims there because they they want to live a, a free and peaceful life. They don't need Putin to to dictate their thoughts and feelings that might well, not even be true. Well Putin ain't gonna be there in five hundred years. So Well I'd who, hope not. Or let- <laughs> <laughs> well let, let's let's talk about the like how everything's going to be governed and leaders and everything in 500 years do you think there's going to be one leader for the world or do you think there was going to still going to be in the kind of system it, it, where each country has their own you know kind of leader and and they talk into like a big union you know you know how it is well i hope that they're all different leaders um, for each country because <laughs> we are very different uh, culturally to other countries so if you were merged into one you'd have no identity of yourself you'd, you wouldn't feel like you're part of anything apart from just the world 
and you know that you're very different you're from just Russia. Another sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'd, I'd hope that there's different leaders. What about you? I think that in 500 years, for example, I think that I wouldn't say a majority of the borders between countries will go. I think. I think some borders will stay just for protection, you know. Um, but smaller countries, I think they will merge into bigger ones. And I think it'll be more of like a, you know, a single world style system. But obviously people in the country vote on if they want these changes, but it's governed by a union or something. Yeah. So like you'd have five people in the board of directors, for example, and uh, they get votes from every country to say, for example, if they want this implemented and they, they technically have a global budget. And there's obviously going to be countries where you wouldn't need that type of budget, you know, because, for example, like if you go to holiday destinations, they already know what they're going to do. They're just they're going to just uh, get people in uh, who are going to stay there, have a bit of fun, blah, blah, blah. But there's going to be places like uh India, for example, and, you know, or China, and they need, they need new houses, they need uh, better roads and everything, you know, so they, they can allocate money appropriately across the world, rather than individual places for individual countries. But would you want to live in a world like that? I think so. I, I, it's kind of like the, uh, the EU at the moment. Okay, but I think the way... For example, in 500 years' time, are people going to migrate all over the world and live there, or are they going to be, you know, using it as a place to stay for a little while and then move on? You know, because obviously you don't want. This is just an example. In 500 years, you don't want like, uh, like 50 million people move into the UK and there's no, you know, control over that. There should be control over how many people can live in a certain area. Yeah. You know? I true. think it should still be controlled because obviously the uh, population is going to be increasing dramatically in that time. That's you know, so. You've raised that now. I didn't think of that. But the population uh, we're reaching, is it how many billion now? Seven billion? It's like eight. Eight, eight, eight. Seven, eight. Yeah. And by, I can't remember what year, but we'd be at 10 billion. So will there need to be population caps in the future? Because apparently our food and how much wheat we can harvest in the whole world will not be enough to cover, and we they're saying we should start eating insects to provide food for the the billions of people um so do you think there'll need to be population caps in the future to to cap population? Um, I don't know I think that it could work out well only if they stop you know instead of making individual houses yeah uh, for each individual family and, and start instead making like not i wouldn't say blocks of flat kind of thing but you know just powers where it hold loads of people you know not not like a flat per se but i don't know just like a big <laughs> let's just say a big cube with loads of people one meeting squared of course isn't it john <laughs> 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 but uh obviously i think that would probably work out a bit more than obviously because obviously at the moment they're trying to obviously build more but by that time you're going to have so many people in the world you're going to need to put them somewhere and I think with population control as in like you know obviously making it so I think it's I don't know if it's China or Japan they have a they have a cap on how many children you can have per household yeah so yeah. there's another part of human right as well involved in all that and do you kill off the kid and so and so and I, I think that's where it gets a bit touchy, you know, because obviously at that time frame, we're going to be more technologically advanced and we're going to know exactly what we're going to be doing. Well, think so of we, it, we could build tons of houses. Yeah, think, so? think of it this way then. Um, uh, food is a, is a major importance. If you have too many people, you can't supply. There isn't enough land in the world to grow enough crops and uh, harvest enough food and meat for people. But uh, I think it was last year, uh, scientists uh, used stem cells from uh, muscle tissue from cows to grow a hamburger. And Sounds delicious, isn't it? <laughs> it cost £200,000, <laughs> so about $400,000 to make that yeah. one patty. But obviously <clears> in the future, you might be able to downscale that and obviously mass produce it. But would that be a viable thing to do in the future? So technically, you wouldn't have to slaughter animals, billions of them every year. 
you could actually just grow from their, their stem cells. Yeah, I mean, the way things are going now, everything's getting, uh, you know, all the animals are getting exterminated very, very slowly. Yeah. Or some of them very, very quickly. So it depends, you know. I mean, with stem cells, um, obviously at the moment, you know, they're very expensive if you want to make something out of it. But in the future, you could probably press one of them Amazon buttons <laughs> and then have it delivered to, have it delivered to you ASAP, you know. Well, what about so, this? And, it, and, it, yeah. You order it and uh, it takes two hours to deliver to your house. But in that time, it's growing in the box. So they send out the it cells won't... and by the time it gets to you, it's grown into a patty. You kill the bacteria or something. I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, John. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. I think, I think we'll end the show here. I, I, I don't think you you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're a doctor, isn't it? But, but but for example, like that, it it could work. I mean, obviously, in that time frame, the technology is going to be very cheap. And as you said about crops and everything, they could probably have it so. Um, you know, instead of, you know, obviously growing the crops and making it have so X amount of many weeks, months, whatever to make, it could probably be uh, genetically modified. So uh, when, once it's delivered, it takes like two days for it to grow or something. Yeah. Well, think, what about this yeah. then? Um, you've often said about colonizing Mars and turning it into a habitable, habit, habit, habit if it's. <laughs> <laughs> habitable, <laughs> habitable, habitable, yeah, habitable <laughs> planet. Um, why couldn't yeah. we grow our crops on Mars and deliver it back to Earth? Well, that's that. That will cost a lot of money. But in one, the future, going... it might be very cheap to go to space and to bring back transport and stuff like it that. It probably won't be very cheap. But if you're talking about having one planet as a as its own type of ecosystem of you know, food and everything, then that might work. But I think it will make more sense putting that on the moon. Oh, it's closer, yeah. You know, I mean, the, it... the, yeah, the moon is closer. You don't want to be traveling six months <laughs> to, to bring down your crops and everything. But obviously, in that time frame, it will probably take like a few minutes to get down there. Who knows? But I mean, um, they say Mars used to have water and it looked quite like Earth. But the moon yeah. is it's just a rock. There's no. Yeah. Where's the soil and the dirt and stuff like that? It's just all moon dust. How could you possibly make that habitable? I said it. Well, the the sun, you know, is going to bring a lot of heat into that as well. And there could be solar panels which take the heat, and then they could have it so that you know there's lighting there, and it could heat up all the plants and everything. Or they could. I'm sure that under the surface of the the there is the ice moon. under the moon. I think or under the surface. Exactly. So. You know, I don't, I don't know. I think they could get minerals and everything like that and, you know, create certain ways to do it. But um, I'm not a mechanical but scientific engineer, John. So. <laughs> well, I'll put, I'll put this question out here. And, and also, if you're if you're listening along and you have questions for us for our next show that we could answer, just type it down in the comments and we'll, we'll try yeah, our best be to really answer good. it with our scientific yeah, knowledge that we've, we've gained <laughs> over the last 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think it would be uh it would be viable to do something like that but obviously um you know i think as technology goes on there's probably going to be maybe like 4d printers or something you know out the app by that time you know and food's going to just be easy to make but obviously how do you regulate technology in in all over the world you know and what do they make you know, some people could use that sort of technology to make weapons rather than food, you know. Yeah, that that's frame. worrying like, as well. You know, people could master the technology. Technology is new at the moment, but by that, like, 500 years down the line, you know, how can you regulate something that should be open source? Yeah, you know? that's true. It's very true. And people put, put their ideas out for free these days. No one really cares, you know. Um, like Elon Musk with, uh, I think, certain battery technology. Uh, let, let, let's yeah, get on he's... to let's go into space because we just touched on it there. Um, I mean, at the moment we're we're dipping our toes in the water in space, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So we're we're just having a taste of it. We're not really going out there. I mean, it was in the sixties we went to the moon, and we've really yeah. done nothing else since apart from some probes and things like that. We landed one under comet, 
which is impressive. Mm. But what will we be doing in 500 years in space? Um, 500 years down, what we'll be doing? I think colonizing other planets very slowly. By that time, I think our technology will be so advanced. Um, you know, obviously, we. What was it that uh, one of the NASA astronauts said by 2025, or was it 2035? We're going to probably be a hundred percent certain that life exists on other planets. That's right. Yeah, we'd, we'd have definitive evidence, and I'm not sure where he got that from. Whether it's going to come from SETI which is a, a yeah. bunch of radio telescopes that are looking for alien signals, whether he meant it would find it in that sense or... Yeah, I, I think it could, because obviously they, they've got the technology to do it, but obviously it's going to take a while. But 500 years down the line, I'm sure that we'll probably be in talks with other civilizations, possibly. And maybe even... They might even be on a on a planet which is 100 times bigger than Earth, you know? That would be incredible. And maybe they could yeah, grow well, up... They might, they, yeah, bring it over to us <laughs> in a walk hole or something. You know? uh, <laughs> um, but you know, for example, like their technology could be like ten thousand times more powerful, you know, than ours. So they could probably this is just probable. They could probably bring our planet towards them in the blink of an eye, you know, and put it in their orbit, and then we could be better off, and we could move, we could. Slowly move on to their world if they're nice enough. Well, we so could probably we would, be their slaves. Who we, knows? <laughs> we would be, we would be their moon, just rotating around their planet. Well, we're a planet, so. But no, not not around them. I mean, they'll probably have their own solar system. So. So they'd bring us into it and put us somewhere. Into it, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. So we're, we're probably uh, what? I said that's very interesting that you could bring a that, whole that, planet. That's just an example. Well, we can already uh, bring asteroids into our orbit, so what, what's that to stop another... Well, in theory, we, can. we can't We can do it yet. We haven't done it yet. Well, that's what they're planning with, with some of the big, big asteroids that are coming our way. Uh, don't be scared, folks. It's just... Uh, we would be dead know, by then, but the people in 500 yeah. years might, might have to deal with this. Yeah, so thank God for, <laughs> for us being dead at that time. You know, um... But yeah, bringing you know we're gonna probably bring some stuff into our orbit to um, you know test and monitor that everything and you know gain knowledge, right? So they could probably do the same. They've probably never seen a planet like ours, so they could technically do that with ours. They might say, "Oh look, there's there's light years away or whatever," and say, uh, "You know, we can bring that over here." And they could probably do it so easily that we won't be able to do anything about it. They, yeah, they, I mean, they could be that. It could be a million years in advance, or as we aren't drifting, are we, John? Sorry, we aren't drifting on, are we, from topic? No, that's right then. <laughs> to making sure. Um, with the, with the travel, uh, you said that they could bring us in, but it takes us two years to get to Mars. At the moment, with our with our technology, if we wanted to send people there, but I think in five hundred years we could get there very, very, very quickly, and whether that means yeah, traveling at the speed of light, which would be a massive feat of engineering, or whether even half the speed of light, if we can get to that speed by then, that would be pretty amazing. We could dart yeah. around the solar system quite easily. Yeah, I think it might even take like thirty minutes to get to a planet in the future. Maybe we'd it be depends on how we how we use. Sorry. Maybe we'd be commuting there to work, as if we were just going through London on the tube. Who knows? You know, is it, you could say like space is like veins in 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 a in a body. You know, we got we can move around. You know, but at the moment it's gonna it ain't gonna take us. You know, like thirty minutes to get there is going to take us a long time. But just just imagine like how long it takes for like a satellite to go out of our solar system. That mm. takes for ages, you know, like forever. So doing that in five hundred years down the line, that's going to be a totally different thing. We're gonna we're gonna be easily, I think. We just have to find out the quickest route, you know. Like as you're looking at the TFL journey planner. Like the space trying to, trying to find the, the central line to Mars. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Uh, it is interesting. They're, I mean, space is... We're just a, a speck of dust, and even the Earth seems massive to us, but space is absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Yep. And even in 500 years, we wouldn't have explored even our own solar system, maybe, as half as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, I don't think we'll yeah. ever be able to explore the whole universe, but not probably not even our galaxy. Uh, but we might yeah. have more understanding uh, of it in the future, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, um, at the moment, we're, we've only started really looking at space travel since what, like, well, pr- like very primitive in what, the 1700s or something? Or yeah, 1500s. through telescopes and, and then, stuff like that. Yeah. And then what, in the past, what, less, well, less than 100 years, probably about like 60 years, that yeah. we've actually been fully involved in space travel. But what's interesting is uh, deep sea travel. We, we we don't really know what's at the bottom of the oceans. And do you think in 500 years' time that would probably be we'd know our planet more than we know space? We'd hope so, because apparently we've only explored. I can't remember. I'm just trying to figure out there, but it was around five percent of our seas and oceans. So there's still yeah. 95 percent that we haven't. <laughs> been able to explore there's there's many many deep places in the sea like really really deep and we've never we've yeah. never been down there so we don't know what is down there and every time they do there's a lot expla- of factors yeah every time they do an exploration exploration down there they always find new creatures and plankton different species and and things like that so there's a lot left to explore on our planet so in 500 years yeah. we've probably mastered earth by then we know everything about it hopefully yeah but but I think at the moment, I think, you know, we're trying to find other planets and see if there's other people. That's obviously the curiosity of the human race, right? Yeah. But then in 500 years' time, uh, you know, we could already be out of this planet. Or we could still, or a majority of us still could be here, but we, you know, there could be like so many people on another planet and we could communicate that way. Or, uh, you know, colonizing another planet. You know, we could do that with robots, nanobots. So we could, you know, slingshot off other planets and move on to other planets and how the nanobots can, you know, recreate factories that create more nanobots and they could slowly move on. So they could probably be building houses over the minerals and materials that are on those planets, you know? Yeah, probably better houses that we live in. Yeah, probably. So it's a poss- it's a possibility, you know. I mean, it's it's, it's something to think about. Um, yeah. Because obviously, you know, you're not really going to get a man going on to, uh, you know, um, like Jupiter, are you? And try, trying to make a planet, you're going to send robots. The robots, you don't really, n- no one really cares. They've only got one sort of task, you know. And you're going to send them on that certain task to do their job, and that's it. No, well, they're fearless. They don't they don't die. Well, they I mean they. How they're powered is a different sort of different topic altogether, but they they don't die. They're fearless. They just keep going and going and going. They're not like humans where we have a life expectancy and after that we're dead and we can't carry on. So this until whole, we get real AI, yeah, until we get proper AI and put it in us, maybe see what happens then. Yeah, um, yeah. But the the nanobot thing is a good idea. It's a way to explore <laughs> and get vast amounts of data. And if they can replicate themselves and send some more onto another planet, they replicate, they go onto another place and so on and so on. You'd find out Yeah, but it's not only that quick. though. Yeah, I d I don't think it's only just that. I think they could um map out the universe as well, you know? Rather than just sending them on that certain planet to do a certain job, they could even map things out, like where each of the planets are and everything. You know, exact. You know? Have a map or wherever of the it's universe. slingshot. Exactly. At the moment, we've got a uh, map of the observable universe, but that's done by SETI. So that's what we can see from our planet. But what if we could actually send things to map it for us, like physically? Yeah. And that's a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, 500 years, you'd expect them to have something like that by then. Yeah. A map of yeah, but the I, actual I, universe. Yeah. You know, this. There's a lot of uh, things to consider. Who knows, man? There, there might even be uh, terrestrial civilizations that come to um, to Earth and say hello. You know. Well, what if <laughs> there might be an alien helipad over here that 
that he, he lets people come over here and have, have some of our uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know? They'd be really impressed with that. I'm sure they would. But what if sure. um, we're talking about exploring and this hard work looking out and trying to find things and gathering science? What if that all came to us from another civilization instantly? They come over, they say, here's a map of the universe. Here's a map of this. This is how this works. Here's how you travel at the speed of light. And boom, you don't need 500 years of progression. They've just given it to you. Well, I think that's bad. Well, the thing is, our maps could be different to their maps. Our knowledge could be different to theirs. But, you know, I think whatever way it's done, we probably have both done it on the right way anyway. It's like you're in a math class and you're not following the teacher's instructions, but you obviously get to the final result on your own. Yeah. like you, you, you might get in trouble for it, but the, you know the teacher has obviously got their own way of doing it. But you know you're right, though. So there could be another way of doing things. Yeah, possibly. You know, and uh, I don't think I don't think another civilization would have done that. I think they slowly give hints, as you know, probably I don't know. This is very debatable, and obviously, if people don't believe me, then don't take any offense to it. But uh, obviously, back in ancient times, there was a lot of hints and. You know, a lot of uh, paintings and carvings of, you know, beings and uh, ships and, you know, entities and paintings and everything. So that could hint that they were being pushed into binding uh, angelic type of beings in the sky that were helping wars and everything. Here's where I disagree. You know, this is where we disagree yeah. because I, I don't believe that. I, I know I've seen the paintings you're talking about. Um, and if anyone's uh, interested in that, they can watch a video called Ancient Aliens Debunked. And that goes through all the evidence that ancient aliens claim that uh, is evidence when it's really not. Um, but that's where me and you differ. I mean, some of it does look really suspicious. But if you look mm-hmm. into it more, you find it's not at all. And you've got to realise that Ancient Aliens is a TV series aimed at capturing an audience and making money. So they're, of course they're going to say crazy things they're not doing it oh, right, for example what if that is real then what if it is real how would you feel i'd be shocked i'd be absolutely shocked and i'd embrace it and want to know more about it and, and why we haven't changed that much since then if, if how they... does that, uh, so what about religion then because obviously those are religious uh, religious <laughs> religion but you know, different. Let, let me just check my dictionary for that word. Things. Bit, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please do. <laughs> Religious. It's a new one. I think. Might, have to, might have to add that one down. You know? um, but yeah, you you know, what I mean, you know, it's, it'll probably conflict with a bunch of things, people's views, and yeah, I mean, religion. Um, how people see the world. Yeah, religion's a big. Well, it was a big thing, and it still is in people's lives. You know, it's it's your belief. Well, about five hundred years down. How do you think that will be around religion and everything? Well, currently the uh, religion is going down and down, especially uh, Catholicism. <laughs> Catholic- <laughs> I'm rubbish at words. Right? Hang on a minute, John. Let me just add that to my dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it got me back there. Um, but religion is falling, in, well, especially Catholics and among that faith. Um, mm-hmm. But it's what you believe. Like, I, I, I don't. I'm not terribly religious myself. I believe that there is something bigger than us, but whether it's not the God that brings light and Jesus to me is, is I don't, I just don't believe in that aspect of it. But people do, and I don't, I don't criticize for that at all. It's their belief, and I have my belief. Um, but yeah. uh, your question: uh, in the future, uh, maybe we will know more about the universe, and people will become more spiritual and realize that. Everything, even our, our DNA is coded, and how did it get coded, and how does the universe work? Everything's data and numbers, so there must be some sort of creation behind that. And maybe people will start yeah. believing like more spiritual and togetherness. But as for old style religions, I think that they're all the same in the sense that they're trying to reflect that. But back then they didn't understand it, but we understand it more and yeah. realized that it's more spiritual. What about you? All yeah. religion be there for you or would you be religious in the future oh well, if i was still around yeah <laughs> you know? um, hold on here's I, I, a question I don't think, huh? uh, in 400 Sorry? years they bring you back from being frozen right and yep. 
um, they're still Catholics. Catholics about 500 years. All right, so say 500 years, they bring you back to being frozen (laughs) after I poisoned your porridge. Um, Okay. Would you be surprised if people were still practicing in churches and mosques and things like that? If it was all still the same religiously? Uh, I think a lot of religions would decrease. So I think there'll be the main religions left. I don't, you know, obviously the smaller ones would be you know, around, but not in the, the size they are today. Yeah. But I would be kind of shocked. If religion be, if because... religion was still a big part of civilization. Yeah, because religion dictates a lot in the world today. So, um, you know, we're slowly moving into a technology. And I think that technology, and I think it allows people to think for themselves now. Because yeah. everything's becoming more open. You know, we've got open web, we've got open open source, literally everything. You know, people are free to do things. But a long time ago, you know, people weren't allowed to do that. So, obviously, people are thinking for themselves. And I think that at that time, if, if it's 500 years down, uh, I would be very shocked. Because it, I think it would play a different part. You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, the churches don't really embrace technology, do they? They don't embrace anything. They just stick to old traditional values. And I think that this is my own view, people. But I think that, uh, I don't know. I think technology dictates, is going to dictate a lot in the future. And I don't think religion is going to be around to uh, appreciate the kind of world we're going to be in. I think they're just going to be sticking to old values that are traditional people. But you've got to think we're going to be 500 years down the line. And a lot of people are going to have different views. More people are going to be less religious. That's my own view. And, um, you know, I don't think people still still say stuff like, oh, my God, and, you know, uh, God help me. But I don't think they're going to, you know, I think that, yeah, I don't think they'd know what they're talking about. I think it would just be a part of the English dictionary, what it means, you know. Yeah. And I think the dictionary is going to change as well, like terminologies and everything. Well, you've said a couple today that uh, will probably be added to the dictionary. (laughs) <laughs> so <have> you <laughs> so you you know you you know what i mean i mean it's just uh it's going to be a big world that we're going to live in and um you know we might even come across extraterrestrial civilizations that don't believe in it or they have their own different religions and their own own beliefs so they will probably clash as well so yeah but um i think it take quite a long time for a religion to be gone all together because I think I, I still think, so. think in the bottom of our hearts there's this this burning to believe that there is something higher than us, and there could be definitely a creator. Yeah, because where do you go when you're dead? You know, that, that's that's a that's a big topic. No one knows where they go when they're dead. Yeah, so, you don't you know, know until unless, you die. Yeah, exactly. You might die, and you might, you know, you might be in another world, and it might be a simulation. Who knows? Well, you can tell me well, we when, just... when I poison your porridge and put you in the freezer. Uh, you can yeah. tell everyone after when they revive you what, what happens when yeah. you are out cold, literally. We we heard it here, forensics people. Uh, <laughs> if I die of any poisoning, then you know who did it. <laughs> I'll, I'll edit that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting what happens in the future. Thanks for listening, and um, there's links on the screen there for for Facebook, Twitter and to subscribe as well and leave your comments anything we've said to, uh, today or tonight where, whatever time you're listening if you want to comment on religion where you think it will be future wars yeah. where do you think the next war will be health and life expectancy a- any topic we've, uh, anything anything, anything you want to, we'll comment and answer your questions so thanks very much yeah. for listening and subscribe Bye. Bye. Bye.